Good morning all. So today we are going to discuss the measurement of the power in the three phase supply system. As we know that in, 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 in general, so uh, to measure the power in any, any, any supply system, the AC system, so generally we are going to use that watt meter. So what is this watt meter and what is the construction diagram? We are not going in detail about the construction diagram of the watt meter. But however, here we are going to see what is the watt meter and what are the uh, basic principles it is going to, to take in order to measure the power. So if you, if you want to talk about the watt meters, this watt meter has the two coils. One is called the current coil, the another is called a pressure coil. So this is the uh, very, very basic electrical uh, symbol for your watt meter. You have a current coil and the pressure coils and this watt meter has the four terminals that is m l and c v like this these are the terminals has been given and generally this watt meter has been connected in between the uh, phase to some neutral wire in between the it is a single phase system and this is the what the watt meter connection can be represented here so here you can you can if you if you see here so here the current coil this current coil is a, a low resistance low resistance value it has and your pressure coil has pressure coil has high resistance value high resistance value so why because if it is uh, in in this watt meter so if it is the current coil has low resistance therefore the maximum current can be flow through this current coil so that the, that current can be measured Similarly, for the pressure coil here, high resistance is, is going to be employing this resistance value here so that you can you can get that maximum voltage across this uh, maximum voltage across this pressure coil can be can be developed, it can be measured. So that is the reason why it has been given the two coils has been different resistance values. Then the finally the watt meter reads. What is this watt meter is going to read here is so this is nothing but V pressure coil voltage and I current coil voltage uh, current coil that is the current coil current and cos theta the angle between VPC and IPC I, ICC. So this is what the watt meter is going to read. What is this watt meter? Watt meter is going to read W is equal to some V I cos cos pi R cos theta isn't it? So this is what the 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 power can be can be developed in any ac circuit so that can be measured by your watt meter you can you can talk something like this so here uh, and you, you can you can get the this kind of the values i think you have understood what is the basic idea of the watt meter and uh, in general watt meters are used to measure the power in the in, in measure the power in the ac systems and uh, and, and uh, you can you can go for to measure any kind of power in the AC circuit. So here we have to understand for in order to measure the three phase, in order to measure the, the power in the three phase system, how many watt meters are needed. So that is also one of the important point we have to understand here. So in order to understand this, uh, how many watt meters we needed for the three phase system. So one the scientist is called the Brondel has developed one theorem, the Brondel has developed the one theorem so what is the theorem according to the theorem only how many watt meters we needed to measure the three phase system you can you, you can decide by using this brondel theorem so what is this bond brondel theorem says here is if a balanced if a balanced system a balanced system of n phase n phase system if it is there then if it is a, a balanced n phase system if it is there then the number of number of watt meters the number of watt meters are used used as n minus 1 so that is the the theorem has been given by the blonder suppose we have a it is a balanced case if it is a a balanced case balanced system of n phase the n phase balanced system it is there 
and you want to measure the power in that n phase n phase balanced system then the number of the watt meter requires are n minus 1 number of watt meters are required so that is what he just he wanted to talk here blondel's theorem so then if you want how to talk what are the uh, systems we have different systems here so we need to understand what is this balanced system and unbalanced system so here you can talk the system generally can be defined here it can be a n phase balanced system n phase balanced system and n phase unbalanced system unbalanced system it is a three phase balanced system or three phase unbalanced system or two phase system or four phase system five phase systems like that i am generally defining a balanced system and unbalanced system what is meant by this balanced system or unbalanced system defining here is if your voltages if r y b phase voltages you have a r phase y phase and a b phases are magnitude is same and displaced by 120 degrees each then that system it is called a balanced system if it is not then it, that system it is called a unbalanced system so that is the, the fundamental definition if you understand what is meant by the balanced system and unbalanced system now come to this according to this blondel's theorem it is a balance it is the blondel has defined in this theorem for a balanced system so it is a n phase balanced system then according to this blondel theorem how many number of watt meters we needed so i can say we required the n minus 1 number of watt meters are required here so these are the n minus number of watt meters required to to measure the power so that is what the blondel's theorem is defined for specifically for the balanced system so example i can take now suppose i have a three phase balanced system three phase a balanced system if i have then how many number of watt meters i needed three minus one three minus one means two watt meters are sufficient two watt meters are sufficient to measure the three phase system or uh, three phase supply system so that is the meaning of it if it is an unbalanced system then how many number here if it is unbalanced system then how many number of watt meters we needed is again n number of watt meters are needed here n number of watt meters are needed because it is unbalanced system so for each phase we need to we need to install the one watt meter one watt meter like that for each space so if it is n phase then we have n number of watt meters is needed if you, example if you, if you talk suppose if it is a three phase unbalanced system if it is a three phase unbalanced system the number of watt meters needed is three number of watt meters watt meters are need required so that is the concept here so according to blondel's theorem according to blondel's theorem if you want to measure the three phase balanced system then how many number of uh, watt meters you needed is a uh, two number of watt meters you needed so that is what the two watt meters is needed now we will see uh, we will take that balanced system and we will we will we will take the two watt meters and we will try to measure the power in the balanced system so i i can i can i can write here it is a two watt meter method now i can write it is a two watt meter two watt meter method now i'm considering the three phase balanced systems therefore obviously according to blondel's theorem i need the two watt meters so i can write a two watt meter method to to measure the uh, power in a, a three phase balanced system so i will i will consider first the generator point here so you, what is this watt meter i have to convert here so i have a generator of star connected generator let us consider a star connected generator so this is my a star connected generator i have and these are the lines i'm going to show here so this is my star connected generator generator side i'm showing here now so you also know that it is a generator point and similarly you can you can also you can also uh, uh, generator is generating the power and it is transmitting to the load side so i'm assuming the load it is a rl load of star connected system 
I am assuming it is a RL load of star connected. So it is a RL load of star connected system. So this is the RL load. RL, RL and R and L. So this is what the star connected load I just want to show here. So this is the star connected L load now. So after the connecting this point here load has been as we know this load has to be connected from generating point to your load load point so obviously we have to connect this load so this is what the the load has been connected like this so that if it is a load has been connected to generator so whatever the generating amount of energy from the generating point it can be transferring from this generating point to a load point so that your load can consume the power so that is the what the general and simple diagram I'm showing in order to 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 measure the power consumed by this load by using the watt meters method here so after this what I'm trying to do here is I have to use the two watt meters I have to connect these two watt meters and I have to connect these two watt meters in these lines so as you know this is a R line this is R this is Y line and this is the B line so that is what I am defining three phases three phase lines I am showing here now I am going to connect the uh, watt meters here so my watt meters um, uh, how we are going to connect here so in the line it is a current coil is going to connecting and here it is a pressure coil so this is going to connecting to up to this point so this is what the connection I am showing here and this is one of the watt meter m l c v so this is your current coil and this is your pressure coil so this is the watt meter one i'm showing here similarly another watt meter also i'm connecting to this line here so this is the line where my another watt meter is connected so something like this coming and it has been shorted with this point this is that again m l c and v this is the second watt meter w2 has been connected so watt meter 1 and watt meter 2 i have now i'm connecting to this line in order to measure how much amount of generator is transferring its power to this load so that can be measured by w1 and w2 that's why this is called a two watt meter method now i just want to identify here what are my line voltages and phase voltages and line voltages and line currents so as we know if it is a whatever the emf induced in this particular line so that is i can take ern ern that is nothing but a phase voltage similarly the emf induced in this winding of the generator it is eyn i can take and this is nothing but your phase phase voltage induced in this winding Similarly, in this winding, I can take EBN. EBN is a phase voltage, and the currents flowing through this one is IRN. IRN, and the same current here, I just want to show IYN, and the same current here it is showing IRN. So, all these are the, the shown variables, all these are the variables are nothing but the phase currents and the phase currents and phase voltages isn't it that the phase currents and phase voltages this is a neutral point these are the phase currents and phase voltages all these the variables what i've shown here now come to here so this is i can write ir this is the line current similarly i can write iy line, line current ib it is also line current in case of star connection system your line currents are equal to phase currents because this current is also equal to this current isn't it this is the phase current and this is the line current both are equal so that is what the property of the star connection we have seen now if you want to find what is this voltage here so this voltage i can i can write here this is the voltage across the between the r and y line this is vry vry i am writing that is that voltage uh, you can say it is a line voltage you can say similarly also you can you can write what is the voltage from here to here this voltage also you can write here what is this voltage vby 
you can write it is v b y v b y is a voltage between the y and b line so v b y is a voltage here you can you can show here so that is what i'm i'm just wanted to show here and uh, uh, you can what is this current is flowing here it is the same current ir ir r equal to irn isn't it same current are flowing through this point also same current are flowing in this direction so that is also you can show here now after completing of the analysis of this diagram let me to find what is the w1 is reading and what is w2 is going to read what is my w1 is going to read here so you know what is w1 going to read here is whatever the current flowing through this current coil what is the current flowing through this current coil that is nothing but ir is equal to irn isn't it so ir or irn both are the same currents so which is the flowing through this current coil and what is the voltage read by this pressure coil what is the voltage read by this pressure coil that is vry vry so i can write here the w1 can be measures the magnitude of o v r y and the magnitude of i r n and cos of the cos of angle between the v r y and i r n what is the angle between these two we don't know but uh, sake of understanding let it be a mt value here so this is amount of power can be measured by your first watt meter similarly what is the amount of power measured by the second watt meter here so what is the current flowing through the second watt meter that is ib or you can say ibn ib or ibn is the current is flowing through this coil isn't it so that is what and what is the voltage across this pressure coil voltage across this pressure coil vby so i can write it is vby and this is ibn ibn and cos of angle between the this vby and ibn so what is the angle we will we'll decide later so this is the uh, w1 and w2 is measured by your watt meter uh, either 1 and 2 so these are the amount of things i am writing here so after doing this one again what I'm, i am i want to write what is vry what is vry this is that nothing but how will you write vry vry is nothing but this vry is nothing but so you can you can apply a kvl or kvl here so that this voltage this voltage plus this voltage algebraic sum of the these three voltages equal to zero if you write then from this vry you can write here it is nothing but vrn minus vyn so these are the if you want to write in phasor form then that is kind of thing will come here Similarly, I want to write what is V B V Y B V Y B. What is this V Y B? Again, this is I want to write. So, what is this V Y B again? This is the loop. You can you can understand here. So, this is the loop kind of thing is coming. This voltage plus this voltage plus this voltage. This three voltage algebraic sum KVL. If you do, then you are going to get V B Y here. V Y B. That is I can write V B N. Vbn minus Vyn. So this is what the relation I'm trying to drawing from this this uh, diagram now. This is what I'm writing now. So after getting these values, what I try to do is I will draw the phasor diagram. I will draw the phasor diagram. Uh, whatever the for phasor diagram we have drawn for the star connection system, same phasor diagram we have to draw here. So let us consider the phase voltages. So this is the one of the phase voltage, and this is that one of the phase voltage. And this is the one of the phase voltage. These are the three are balanced, uh, displaced by 120 degrees each. Vbn. This is Vrn. This is Vyn. Vyn. These are the phase voltages. I'm I'm showing here. These are the phase voltages. So after showing this phase voltages, I just want to show the, the phase current as well. So what is this phase current? And uh, these are the 120 degrees each displaced by 120 degrees is this voltage. Now I want to show what is the phase currents of the respected voltages. So if you, if you see the load here, as this load is a, this load is a 
a combination of your uh, uh, inductor and resistor it is a RL load in the case of RL load if you write what is the voltage and current relation then you come to know that your current and voltages your current lags your current lags voltage by some angle pi isn't it so this is what the concept you have gone through in the previous lectures so if it is RL load then your volt your current lags voltage by some angle pi so that is the concept you again you have to apply here therefore it is the phase voltage therefore what is the phase current here phase current is nothing but I R N phase current is nothing but I R N but this I R N current is going to be lagging with respect to V R N with a some angle pi your I R N the phase current is lagging V R N with respect to angle pi so that is what I am showing here similarly VBN and IBN so this is also you can show here so this is what the lagging of your IBN IBN lagging with some angle pi again similarly you can show here so this is what the another one this is IYN I1 and it is lagging with respect to VYN with angle pi so this is what I am trying to showing here so after showing this one what I try to do here is so I want to draw these two values I want to draw these two line voltages so if you see here it is minus VYN it means I have to shift this one so I can shift this VYN into 180 degrees so this is nothing but minus VYN is coming like this so after getting this one I can add these two values I can add these two values so that I can get this is my VRY so that I can get this is my VRY and uh, you can you can see here so what is the difference between these two angles are nothing but it is coming the 60 degrees it is coming 60 degrees then what is this angle is nothing but it is a 30 degrees so these are the uh, angle dividend of all the vectors here now similarly if you want to write what is VYB VYB then this one vector this vector if you do this two then this is going to come somewhere here so this is my VBY so this is what my VBY is coming VBY is coming and uh, here you can see uh, this is the angle is 30 degrees 30 degrees and uh, from VB when IBN the angle between these this and this is nothing but pi pi then what is this angle in between this VBY and IBN this angle is nothing but we can say it is pi minus 30 degrees pi minus 30 degrees that is the angle between your VBY and IBN so that is what what is the angle between these two here now angle between the VRY and IRN this is pi plus 30 pi plus 30 so like that you can define the angles here now come back here so after getting all the information in this phase R diagram so I have to write what is W1 so you know what is W1 here it is so W1 is nothing but this is the expression VRY you know what is this one this expression it is VRY and this is IRN IRN and cos t cos of the angle between the I VRY and IRN what is the angle between the VRY and IRN what is the angle difference between these two it is nothing but 30 plus pi it is nothing but 30 plus pi so this is what the angle now we are trying to getting from this equation so after getting this what is w2 here w2 is in again but this one v v b y v b y and uh, i b n we are getting and cos of cos of what is angle between v b y and i b n what is this angle between your v b y and uh, i b n in between these two what is the angle between these two this one pi minus 30 so pi minus 30 so this is also can be written as 30 minus pi so cos of minus theta again cos theta will come 
so I can write it is nothing but VBY and uh, IBN cos of 30 minus pi also I can write because cos of minus theta again cos theta will come so and I can write this equation so W1 and W2 is going to rate this is the expression you can you can get from this uh, analysis so these are the amount of power read by this w1 and this is the amount of power read by or uh, uh, measured by this w2 volt uh, watt watt meter so after getting these two what i i will going to do some kind of analysis here so what it what i am going to do here is i will add the w1 plus w2 then what is the what is could be happening here so that is what i just want to see so as you know w1 and w2 is nothing but vry uh, vry is nothing but these are the line voltages isn't it this is vl this is il isn't it similarly this is also vl il okay these are the line voltage and line currents isn't it so i can write instead of vry vby i can write vl vl like that so you can write so w1 and w2 so vl il cos of 30 plus pi plus VL IL cos of 30 minus pi so like that you can write isn't it so if you make it VL IL is common then this could be like a tri trigonometric formula so if you solve this trigonometric formula then finally what is you are going to get here is you will get after solving this one you will be going to get uh, root 3 VL IL cos pi so this is what you are going to get here root 3 VL IL cos pi that is nothing but W1 plus W2 so this is what the you are going to get so what is this root 3 VL IL cos pi as we already seen this is the total amount of power measure isn't it this is nothing but a, a total amount of power total power root 3 vl il cos pi is nothing but total power it means that it means that you can put one note here the summation of the summation of summation of the two watt meter readings two watt meters meters readings readings are going to give the total power total power in this three phase circuit power in the three phase three phase circuit so that is the meaning of this one w1 w2 is equal to root 3 vl il cos pi this is the total active power uh, you can get the total active power of the uh, circuit by by adding the reading of the w1 and w2 watt meter 1 and watt meter 2 so that is the one of the important observation we made here so after this i will two i will subtract w2 minus w1 then what could be the scenario here so if you see this one then w2 minus w1 again if you do the formula il vl will come in cos of 30 minus pi minus a cos of 30 plus pi is going to come and then again it is a cos a minus b minus cos a plus b some kind of trigonometrical formula is there if you if you just going to do this one then you are going to get vl il uh, sin pi so this is what you are going to get w2 minus w1 like that you are going to get here so this is what the expression we are going to get after simplifying that trigonometrical formula so after getting this equation what i am trying to do is i will i will multiply with the root 3 I will multiply with a, a root 3 then if it is like look like if you show this one then it is look like a root 3 vl il sin pi it means this is a reactive power of the three phase circuit it is a reactive power isn't it so what you what is observation we have made here is note if you subtract if you subtract the our difference of the so the total reactive power can be get the total reactive power reactive power power can be obtained can be obtained obtained by 
by difference of the two admitter difference of the two admitters two watt meters meters multiply with multiply by root 3 times so that you are going to get the reactive power of the circuit so that is the observation uh, another kind of observation we have tried to finding from this analysis so after doing this again what I, what I what is the analysis I am going to see here is suppose I have a W2 minus W1 I know what is this one and W2 plus W1 this is also I know so what is W2 minus W1 is nothing but uh, VL IL sin pi isn't it expression for this one it is root 3 VL IL cos pi so so these are the concept you know so from this i can write it is so going to be a tan pi tan pi root 3 into w2 minus w1 by w2 by plus w1 so this is one of the expression you can call if you want to find what is the phase angle here then this is nothing but tan inverse of root 3 w2 minus w1 by w2 minus plus w1 so this is the pi of the angle between you can calculate then what is this power factor so the power factor also you can calculate that is cos pi so like that also you can calculate the what could be the power factor of the any any network so that is also another uh, analysis you can you can do here now after this what I try to do is the one of the another important concept here the effect of load effect of the load on the power factor effect of load load on the power factor this concept we're going to see as we know that whenever we have the load has been connecting this loads how they are going to affect your power factor so that is meaning if it is a purely resist to load then what is the effect it is power factor and if it is a purely inductive load or rl rc then what could be the uh, power factor it means you are always your power factor will uh, depends on the what type of the load we have been connected at the consumer side suppose i have a suppose i have a load something like a purely resist to load then what is the scenario you know so this is v and i it is a purely resist to load then this is the voltage and in the similarly the current also going in phase so there is no oh, the angle between the v and i isn't it so it is no angle r v and i are in phase in phase isn't it so this is the load if it is connected purely resist to load then your current and voltage are in phase therefore there is no what is the pi here the pi is 0 degrees therefore what is your power factor now cos pi is equal to 1 so this is the power factor and this one which you are getting that is called a unity power factor unity power factor so this is a one of the observation you can you can made here similarly suppose you have a purely purely inductive load have a purely inductive load then what could be the power factor here as we know for inductive pure inductive load then your your current lacks voltage by a 90 degrees so isn't it so voltage lacks by 90 degrees so therefore the cos pi is equal to 90 degrees therefore the cos pi is going to zero will come cos pi is going to come in zero then this is called a zero power factor zero power factor lagging this is the name has been given zbf zero power factor lagging <coughs> this is what it is going to give here similarly if you have a load something like this have a combination of r and l r and l then you know the your, your voltage and your current has some angle isn't it there is a pi angle some angle will be there in between your voltage and current 
obviously your current lags voltage by some angle pi so here so whatever the cost pi value will come in here that is nothing but a, a power factor lagging power factor you can name it as a lagging power factor so we have the rl load then whatever the power factor is going to be coming that is nothing but a, a lagging power factor similarly if you have a, a pure uh, capacitive load if you have a pure capacitive load then also you can able to find then this is what the pure capacitive load then this is my current is leads voltage by 90 degrees current is leading but the pi is 90 degrees here but my cost pi is equal to 0 but it is a 0 power factor leading you can say it is a 0 power factor leading it is a purely capacitive load if it is a RC load if it is a RC load if it is a RC load R and C if it is like this then you can come to know this is my voltage therefore this is my current is coming my current leads voltage by some angle therefore whatever the cost pi you are going to get this is nothing but a leading power factor leading power factor because my current is leading here that's why it is a leading power factor and my current always the, the magnitude of the current always depends on the load so which type of load you are connecting according to that your current behavior will be going to change if it is a current leading then it is a leading power factor so that like that you can you can be able to understand what is meant by a lagging power factor leading power factor unity power factors so we can talk like that if you if you summarize the the concept here in in a, a representative a diagram manner it is here then suppose you have uh, you can if you if you want to see the if it is a zero degrees zero degrees and uh, you can say some 90 degrees you can say some 60 degrees like that you can you can you can have it is a 60 degrees or uh, you can say it is a 90 degrees like that you can show here or it is a one it is a one it is come to as zero in between this may be a point three some point six point eight so like that also you can show here it is zero zero power factor and uh, it is again point uh, sorry it is it is point two point three and point eight something like it is coming so it is again point nine point six and point three so these are the power factors these are the pi angle pi angle and these are the power factors also you can show here and similarly here it is the pi angles angle between this voltage and current these are the power factor values also you can show something like this then up to this range whatever the range this is nothing but you can say it is a rc load rc load and your power factor is leading here your power factors are leading here up to this point it is rl load uh, your power factor is lagging lagging but at this point so at this point your your uh, your load is r load and the power factor is unity is it it is a unity but when come to this point this point your factor is l load it is zero power factor lagging when come to this point this is a purely capacitive load here it is a zero power factor leading so likewise also you can able to understand how you are leading lagging power factors and what is the, the, the pi angle of in between the voltage and current also you can able to understand here now we'll see another concept in the same, same way here suppose my power factor is unity suppose my power factor is unity power factor is is unity then what is my watt meter is going to read so that is the another uh, analysis i just want to see here my power factor is unity means what my pi is equal to zero my power factor unity means pi is equal to zero then what is my w1 is going to read this is vl 
IL cos 30 plus pi isn't it this is the expression for W2 W1 this is VL IL cos 30 minus pi so these are the expression we have so this is going to read my pi is equal to 0 therefore my VL and IL cos 30 and this is also VL IL cos 30 is going to come here so if you do this one then you are going to getting root 3 VL IL by 2 something like here also you are getting VL IL by 2 so this is what the observation you have made here so what I observed from this one is suppose my power factor is unity or my load is purely resist to load then my both watt meter read the same value both watt meters watt meters reads the equal value equal value of the positive values isn't it that is the observation i have seen here both are reading here this is also both the values of watt meters have the equal reading suppose w1 read the 20 watt then w2 also read the 20 watt so that is the meaning the second observation is suppose my pi is equal to 60 degrees lagging it means that it is a RL load, isn't it? RL load. Then what could be the scenario? Apply 60 degrees to this this expressions here instead of pi. Then W1 is going to come in. Zero will come, but W2 is going to come in here. Root 3 into VLIL by 2 is coming here. If it is a lagging RL load and if it is the pi angle is 60 degrees, then W 1 is going to read the 0 value but w2 is going to read the some amount of value so this is the some value has going to read so another concept uh, you can talk here the third one suppose my pi angle is 90 degrees let it let it be it may be a, a r loader purely r loader it may be purely a capacitive load then what could be the scenario if it is a pi is 90 degrees then apply this one then w is going to coming minus vlil uh, 2 and W2 is going to come here VL IL by 2 so I am applying in these two equations so I am getting these two values here VL by 2 and VL IL by 2 it means that if you see the magnitude are same but W1 and W2 but one watt meter is going to show one watt meter is going to show the negative polarity negative polarity so this is another observation we have made from this uh, by varying the power factor so by summarize all these points let it be i will i will make one tabular form so that it will be very easy easy for us to understand so i will take the power factor here power factor i have a watt meter reading one the second watt meter reading and w1 and w2 if you add then what is happening and i will take the remarks i will take the remarks now i will i will do the analysis whatever the analysis i have done so power factor pi is equal to zero it means it is unity power factor then this is going to read the positive value this is also going to read the positive value and if you w1 plus w2 is going to come the positive value so that is what the the first analysis we have done here isn't it all the coming positive values but the remarks is nothing but what is the remark here w1 and w2 are equal equal reading both are giving the equal reading that is one of the remark we have seen suppose if it is a 60 degrees i have a 60 degrees then one is reading zero one is going to reading some value here so positive value is reading isn't it it is reading zero but it is reading the post some positive value and uh, adding up these two going to give the positive value here it means what is the remark here one is going to reads one meter reads the zero value but another is going to be reading the positive value that is the remark we have. then if it is a 90 degrees here we have a 90 degrees then this is uh, getting the negative value isn't it minus vl il by 2 
and one is giving the positive value but the magnitude are same both are same therefore the net amount of the power w1 w2 is going to read the zero here so the total active power read by the total active power active power is zero here power is zero why it is coming read zero because a pi is 90 degrees mean it may be a it may be a voltage and current or something like voltage current this is i and this is i whether it may be a whether it may be a capacitive load or it may be a, a inductive load both the cases you have the power factor is pi is equal to 90 degrees and if you do this one then your total active power is going to be zero in case of purely 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 inductive and capacitive load that they does not have a capability to consume the active power isn't it so that is how you can also cross verify the analysis which we, which we have already done in the earlier classes so in between these values suppose i have a zero and less than pi is less than 30 degrees then what could be the scenario again it is positive value reads positive value reads positive value reads but here readings are unequal readings are unequal it means my w1 w2 are different so that is the meaning of if it is 30 less than pi is less than equal to 60 degrees then what is happening here it is pi plus diagonal plus this is also going to give it the positive value same w1 w2 are unequal reading we are going to come similarly 60 degrees less than pi is less than equal to 90 degrees if you have then this is going to read the negative value this is going to read the positive value but the summation of these two is going to come the positive value that is the observation i made here and one of the watt meter reads negative value that is the observation here one watt meter reads a negative value so this is what the the points i have observed from this this uh, watt meter reading of doing this kind of things and uh, this is what the complete uh, analysis of this uh, the measurement of the three phase uh, uh, power in this uh, three phase circuit uh, by using your watt meter method i hope you have I, you have understood this concept and uh, with this i will conclude this session for today thank you